Hi everyone and welcome to episode 2 of our Friday Drum Talk. This week I thought we'd look at snare drums. What's the difference between wood and metal snare drums? Should I own just one or should I own hundreds of snare drums? That's the question you probably need to ask yourself. What styles of music suit certain snare drums? Do the snare drums from different eras sound different? Drum head choice on your snare drums, does it make a big difference? All these things we can have a bit of a look at today. So, also maybe look at, you know, if you only own one snare drum, what should it be? Well, let's start there. If you own one snare drum, what should it be? Well, the answer to that is really, what styles of music do you play? Are you a rock player? Are you a jazz player? Are you a player that plays numerous styles of music and you'd want that one snare drum that's really, really versatile? Well, the answer to that is, well, there are some drums that are very versatile for different styles of music. A classic snare drum that comes to mind is the Ludwig Superphonic. Even though the Ludwig Superphonic got its reputation as, a, as an amazing rock snare drum, People like John Bonham, that was his favorite snare drum, a 14 by 6.5 inch Ludwig Superphonic. But the Superphonic is not only for rock. Depending on how you tune it, tune it fat, low and fat, tune it mid-range, a bit more, even a bit more toppy. You can play all styles, funk, country, rock and roll, rock music, blues, reggae, all styles you can play on a Ludwig Superphonic. So they're very, they're very uh, versatile snare drum. So if you ask me, if you want on, only one snare drum, what would it be? I would say probably go down the path of a Ludwig Superphonic. Or a really good maple wood snare drum. Maple snare drums also tend to be very, very versatile. And if you get a good quality one, you'll find that will have a, a quite a big tuning range. And, that, and that's a really good point to make here too. What's the difference between a really cheap snare drum and a really expensive one? Well, normally the parts they use are a lot better in an expensive one. But often too, those more expensive snare drums tend to have wider tuning ranges. So if you're looking at just owning one snare drum, I would probably spend as much as you can afford and buy the best quality snare drum that you can get and that will give you that really good wide tuning range so should you own this one well yeah if you're not doing much or if you're playing a little bit and you can't really afford to buy more then one is enough one definitely is enough if you ask me should i buy a, another snare drum well my standard answer to that is just one more. <laughs> I'm always saying just one more. You can see behind me here is some of my snare drum collections. Not all of the snare drums that I own, but there's quite a few here. <laughs> just one more always pops in my head. The day I think, oh, I don't need any more snare drums, then someone will offer me a snare drum that's just, well, it's just one more. <laughs> Uh, recently, I just got this one here. Actually, I'll drag it over. I wasn't in the market for this, but this is a 1950 Slingerland Radio King. And I thought, i got to have that drum. Just one more. I won't buy any more after that. And I've been saying that now for about five years. I don't need any more. Or I'll just buy this one and I don't need any more. And as you can see behind me, there's a big selection of snare drums there. So, let's look at um, styles of music that you play. If you're a rock player, you're probably, in my opinion, you're probably better off with a, a metal snare. So you've got that real attack and metallic metal sort of brightness about it. Metal snare drums are great for rock and roll. Again, that doesn't mean you can't play rock with a wood snare. Absolutely can. And in fact, 
this snare drum here, it's made by a company called British Drum Company. It's a six inch and it's made from English yew wood. And this snare drum, it's got a really deep tone to it and it's got this attack almost like a metal snare drum. Killer, it'd be really, really good for playing rock and rock music with it. It's also, if you tune it down low, it's got a nice, nice tubby tone to it too, if you like that really low tuned rock and roll type snare drum. This is a killer for that as well. It's a really good snare for those types of things. While I'm on the subject of this snare drum, one thing I probably should mention too. Traditionally, there was, you know, two main woods that were used in wood snare drums, and that was maple and mahogany. Often a lot of them had either a poplar ply layer within it somewhere. If it was like a three ply, it would be a maple, poplar, maple, or, you know, five or six ply. There'd be a couple of plies of poplar but or maple or mahogany on combination of. Um, that was traditionally what they were. This snare drum is one of these modern snare drums where they're using a lot of weird and unusual woods. This this drum itself is made from English yew wood and it's the first drum I've ever come across that actually uses that wood and um, it's got an incredibly wonderful tone to it so it makes an exceptional tone wood for snare drums I'm, I'm assuming it would probably make a really really good full drum kit as well it's, it's got really nice sonic properties to it we're really fortunate in this day and age, I'm sure in 20, 30, 40 years time, people are going to look back and really call this the golden era of snare drums. There was just so many choices of snare drums out there these days. Different sizes, you know, from three inch or even down to two inch. I think um, that a company in America called A&F, I think they've actually even made a two inch thick snare drum. But this day and age, we've got, you know, three inch, five inch, four inch, six inch six and a half seven eight inch we've got so many sizes in snare drums and people are starting to use different wood combinations people are starting to use even more metal uh back in the olden days you'd either had you know you had brass you probably had um steel aluminium back in the early days these days you've got those metals you've got copper you've got um you know, titanium snare drums, <laughs> you've got cast steel, not only just um, normal steel drum shells, but actually, you know, cast steel, you've got them these days. You've got your brass snare drums with numerous sort of finishes. You've got, you've got um, black nickel over brass, you've got chrome over brass, You've got this raw brass. You've got you know, so many styles in brass. You've got cast brass. In fact, probably one of the best snare drums for rock music besides the Ludwig Superphonic LM400, which John Bonham used. One of the, I suppose, holy grails of rock snare drums is uh, a vintage Tama cast brass snare drum killer sounding drums you rim shot those those snare drums and they cut your head off almost they got so much attack and 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 um grit to them they're amazing for incredibly good rock snare drums or metal snare drums they're really good for that but um let me put this snare drum back so we can look at you know different eras if you're you know Depending on the style of music that you play, if you're a person that plays a lot of vintage style music, you know, um, 40s, 50s, 60s, things like that, if you're playing like 60s soul type music, personally, I prefer a wood snare drum for that. I like mahogany. I've got one here. This is a really good drum for that type of thing. This is actually from a company called Chicago Drum and Restoration which basically make modern day Slingerland drums. This is made just like a Slingerland. It looks like it. Even the logo is very Slingerland-like. But this mahogany has a warmth to it. And a lot, of the, a lot of the music from that era, if you really listen to it, they often tune low. They often even put towels and things over the snare drum to give it this really dry wooden 
sort of tone to it. Um, mahogany snare drums are really good for that. As I said earlier, a good quality maple snare drum will do that job as well from that era. They were really good. As I also mentioned earlier, back in that era, a lot of drums were snare drums were either maple or mahogany. There were exceptions to the rule in the wood ones, um, but there were most of them were mainly those two wood wood uh, types. And uh, a good maple snare drum is a really good all rounder. You can tune them up high. They sound really, really good. Um, they sound good low, medium. You know, they they often have a very good high and wide tuning range. This old Radio King once again too. This is my favourite drum for playing brushes on. So if I was playing in a jazz band that majority of the songs were played on brushes this is my go-to snare drum it's just got that old when you listen to all those classic old jazz tunes that have brushes and it's got that real warm tone to it in the in the brush sound they were using snare drums like this uh, and also little i think buddy rich used a little four inch uh, maple snare drum Like this little guy, once again, this is a Chicago drum and restoration. It's made like a 1960s Slingerland. And I think in the 60s, Buddy Rich actually played a four inch snare drum, not unlike this. Uh, this sounds really good with brushes too. This drum too, if you tune it up fairly high, it's got a really good, uh, it's a really good snare drum for playing funk. Really good for that. Or your rock blues, funk edge, rock blues type music. Um, Robert Cray type styles of music, you know, things like that. The snare drum's really good for that. If you're after metal snares, as I said, they're really good rock snares, but they're also very uh, versatile. The two most popular, besides from the, the cast brass I mentioned earlier from Tama, Ludwig made the Superphonic, but it also made a, a snare drum called the Black Beauty. The superphonic was chrome or nickel over aluminium and the black beauty was black nickel over brass. And I have not a Ludwig black beauty, but I have this little baby from a company called Canopus. This is their snare drum called BB2, which is basically their version of a black beauty, black nickel over brass. It's incredibly versatile drum. I've used it. I've used it on country gigs, I've used it in blues shows, I've used it in soul gigs, uh, I've used it in jazz, played brushes on it. It sounds really good and it's a really good rock and roll and rock snare drum as well. You rim shot this thing playing rock and it just really penetrates through the music. It's a killer snare drum. All of the Canopus snare drums are really good. They're one of my favourite brand of snare drums. If you've never looked at a Canopa snare drum, go and check out one. You'll be amazed at how well they sound. They also made incredibly well too. That snare drum actually is a 14 by 6.5. I only own a couple of 6.5 inch size snare drums. Most of my snare drums, I really like 5, 5.5 inch snares. I've got another Canopus over here. This is uh, made from ash wood. Again, another one of these modern woods that, that snare drum builders are using. Incredibly wonderful uh, tone wood um, ash. It's, very, it's got like a, a dry vintage sound to it. This is really good for playing soul. It's good for playing rock and roll. Good for playing jazz on. It's a really, really beautiful snare drum, this one. And once again, Canopus. Worth looking at. Anyway, this is not a show and tell of all my snare drums. I didn't want to take it down that path, really. Now, really, there's three types of drummers that, you know, be using snare drums. You've got the guy that's got his drum kit set up in the lounge room, and he just plays whenever he feels like it and has a lot of fun doing that. Um, 
really any snare drum that you like the sound of would be perfect for that. If you're a studio drummer, um, I would recommend you own a selection of snare drums. Every time I go into the recording studio, I always take four or five snare drums with me. Because often when I go into a studio, I really don't know what song I'm recording at the time. And I like to have a selection of sounds and selection of snare drums from different eras so I can actually pull out the right sound for the actual song that's being recorded. I often will work very close with the producer and engineer when I go into a, a studio and say, okay, what sort of, what sound are you wanting to create on the drums? And like I said, I'll take four or five snare drums all sounding different. So, I, you know, sometimes I'll set the whole four up and say, you want this sound, you want this sound and work through the drums in, and most of the time they go, oh yeah, I love the sound of that snare drum. So, you know, if you're a studio player, I would recommend have or buy a few snare drums, buy as many as you can afford, uh, especially ones that have a, a different, you know, sonic sonics to them uh, because, you know, having a variety of sounds is really, really good. Um, and you'll probably get more studio work if you turn up with multiple snare drums. So you, you're showing that you're really, really wanting to get the sound that the engineer or producer or the songwriter really has in their head. So that's worth thinking about if you're going to start to go down that path. Um, buy yourself heaps of snare drums. Um, if you're a weekend warrior playing, you know, playing in your band with all your mates, you know, once a month and you do a gig here and there, then you probably only need one snare drum. Uh, if you're a professional musician and you do a lot of sit-in work with different musicians and bands, then I would recommend once again to have a selection of snare drums. I do a lot of sit-in work with different bands i get phone calls oh can you uh are you available to play with my band this weekend it might be a funk band I, so then i look at my snare drums and go okay that's a really killer snare drum for playing funk music so i'll take that snare drum to that gig the next week i might have a gig playing rockabilly music so i know i've got two or three snare drums that really suit that it might be if it's not a really loud and in your face type rockabilly band i'll probably take a five five and a half inch wood snare drum and uh if it's a real almost punkabilly type band i'll probably take a small metal snare drum for those gigs so it's good to have that selection uh some people obviously can't afford it some people are totally addicted to buying snare drums i got a friend in the states he's got about 250 snare drums i don't know when he gets to play them all but you know each to their own, so to speak. I, I have a good selection. Uh, I think currently I've got about 13 snare drums. I really don't need any more than that, and I'll probably end up selling a few and just keep about, you know, eight to 10 snares, all sounding different. So that's that's probably my lot, you know, but you never know. There's just one more snare that needs buying <laughs> at some stage in, in the future. Anyway, on that note, people, I've been talking way too much about snare drums. Let me know what you think uh, and let me know what snare drums you own. Uh, drop a message down below this video. And also, while you're doing that, if you really want to help uh, an old drummer, drummer's life, um, please subscribe to my channel and tell your friends to subscribe as well. And click that little notification bell so you'll know when new videos are turning up. So on that note, people, uh, thanks for watching episode two of Friday Drum Talk. I look forward to uh, coming back next week with this series of, of videos. And by all means, if you have a topic you would like me to talk about on these Friday Drum Talks, drop me an, a message below once again. I'll do my best to put up a video on that topic for you. And feel free to contact me anytime via these YouTube uh, links. And... Um, I'd you know, be keen to hear your, your input on what you would like me to talk about, what you would like me to demonstrate, and so on coming up. In fact, I've got a, a video coming up soon on a really, really wonderful product. Um, called, uh, it's called CRS, Symbol Resonance System. I just bought one the other day to put on my cymbal stand. And the difference it makes to the sound of your cymbals is incredibly, like it's amazing, the difference. So I'm going to do a video on that soon. So stay tuned for that one. Um, I'm sure you'll love, love to uh, hear about that. 
Anyway, on that note, people, once again, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, keep drumming, be happy, get out there and play some drums and let the world see who and what you are. Bye. (laughs) 